Welcome to In A Nutshell, the podcast dedicated to all things agricultural consulting. I'm Dylan Brush, here with Soil Genius and Ag Consultant, Bill Brush, and we're delighted to accompany you on this journey where we break down the different aspects of agricultural consulting. In each episode, we'll dive into the realm of agriculture through the eyes of Bill Brush, where consultants like Bill play a vital role in empowering farmers, agribusiness, and agricultural organizations. If you're passionate about agriculture, problem solving, and enjoy a little bit of detective work, this podcast is tailor-made for you. In episode one, we're going to dive into Bill Brush's backstory and what got him into ag consulting in the first place. We'll be discussing the path that led Bill to where he is today and address some of the important landmarks that he passed along the way. We'll also discuss some of the most influential people that led Bill to being an ag consultant. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So tell me how you got into the ag industry and in particular consulting specifically and how that led you to where you are today. Yeah, as you know, our family's been in farming since 1854 here uh, in California out along the San Joaquin River. And uh, so we've come from a long, long line of farmers uh, farming different crops over the years. Uh, but in my, as I grew into my adulthood, I went to work for a farm supply cooperative here, Stanislaus Farm Supply in Modesto. And after being there a while, I moved up and became the operations manager, which was in charge of a lot of things, one of those being uh, the trucks and machinery and facilities, but also manufacturing of fertilizers and, uh, and also the equipment that we use to, you know, to deliver, haul, and uh, spread all those materials out. But after I'd been there f- with, that, with farm supply for about, oh, at least 15 years, maybe I'll have to look at exactly, but I think it would be about 15 years after I'd been there, and I met a guy, and that guy was Neil Kinsey. And he had come out to speak to our sales staff about soil fertility. And, uh, and that changed essentially my, my direction, my scope, and everything that's happened to me since uh, was all a product of me being introduced to Neil Kinsey in a different way to look at soils. So with Neil, uh, he came and you said he came to Farm Supply where you were working at. Tell me about how you guys got to know each other and how he directly like impacted your, I guess, career path, you could say, in consulting and how that got you to being a consultant. Yeah, when, even though I had been in farming all my life and and had been at the uh, farm supply for many years, I, there, was, there was a guy that I m- met that actually could tell you, prescribe pound for pound what you needed to apply of all the nutrients of, of, that are needed for crop growth. And, and in what levels, if you wanted excellent crops, where you needed to get those numbers to be and the pounds you needed to apply to get that kind of result. And this was mind-blowing to me that I would be up close to 50 years old and not know anything about what plants did with nutrients or whatever. It was really a shocking <laughs> reveal to me, and I would just became fascinated. And after that particular five-day course that he put on for farm supply, I wanted to go and find a lot more. So I began to attend off-site classes and... Uh, We brought Neil back, as the Farm Supply did, every year for about 10 or 12 years. Uh, And and he was always, you know, contributing to our knowledge and expanding it. But in addition to that, I went to some of the private courses held in other parts of the country, you know, know, down in Southern California, back at St. Louis. I was back in in, uh, Florida for a time. I went to several of them, and uh, at one time, I told Neil I probably had more time sitting, listening to him than anybody else anywhere in the world. And he was a worldwide consultant. And it got me thinking that if you can fix soil in California, you can fix it anywhere in the world because it doesn't have a language, doesn't have a nationality. It all works the same and is handled the same. So after listening to Neil and going to a few of his uh, seminars, I guess, so to speak, uh, how did you apply what you were hearing from him into taking the leap from farm supply to consulting on your own? 
Yeah. One of the things I saw was a, a giant need in the industry for the information that Neil had to to deliver. And since he lives in back in Missouri and I'm here in California and the number one ag state in the United States, it just made sense to me that I, it was information that I could take out and deliver to clients up and down. And, and I'm also one that's a globalist when I know that the entire world needs more and better food as this population continues to swell. So I said, we have to do this correctly. And we have to get not only just more food, we have to get better food. And uh, we have to know what it takes to make better food and, and, the, and getting nutrients properly organized and into those plants and how it's delivered. So after uh, at, at Farm Supply, where I was there learning this, I finally decided the only way I was really going to find this out, I had uh, my own farm, which at that time we were farming uh, in the, you know, a few hundred acres. And I said, you know, if this doesn't work and I can't make this a business, I'll just come back home and farm, which w wasn't all bad, you know. It was not, it was at least a landing spot for me. So I set out to spread this knowledge to as many farmers as I could. And you spread out, where did you start spreading out? Where was your target audience? Did you start with, because you had said previously or had mentioned that you had a farm of your own that would be almonds, walnuts, so on and so forth. Uh, did you start with something familiar in like consulting soil fertility for almonds and walnuts? Or did you go completely off the cusp and like go into like vegetables and other fruits and stuff like that? Yeah, well, the last few years that uh, I was at Farm Supply, I began to, to have some clients, uh, not that they were my clients, but I would go out and do the, a lot of the fertility work. Uh, I schooled myself because the Farm Supply was sending all their samples back to uh, Perry Lab through uh, Kinsey Ag Service, and I was getting all the results, so I was learning how to work these, the, the formulas and everything, to be able to put together the proper amount of, of nutrients and pounds to the different types of soil. So I had already started to do some. One of the things I got a lot of work done around here was some on dairy farms, but then a lot on a local vegetable grower that uh, they farmed about a thousand acres but they were so diversified in so many varieties of vegetables that it was really great work and i began to to you know hone my craft around what they had there and so when i left i was probably a little naive thinking well i can fix anything and uh, we found out that you know it you could it just takes hard work and patience to be able to get there. But, but I kind of set out because I had a huge opportunity in California because it was really untapped. And so we could go clear to, uh, to the northern parts of, you know, of the Sac Valley, clear down to the southern end of the valley down below Bakersfield. So we were doing work literally up and down the state and up in the, the coastal valleys and, and even to a certain extent into the foothills on the eastern side of the valley. So uh, that's where I started. So no crop was was off limits. I, if I hadn't worked on a crop, I was very honest and says, I've never worked on this crop, but if you'll give me timings, we'll put together a better fertility than the, the one you currently per, fertility program than the one you have. And uh, fortunately for me, I was correct. We were able to turn around a lot of crops and make them better. I remember one time there was a client I had up in uh, around Yuba City and uh, he had prunes and I'd never worked on prunes in my life. Uh, you know, I didn't like to eat them so I didn't have much interest in them but it's a, a real viable crop up around that area north of there. So I said okay what are we trying to do here and uh, I found a lot about sizing and that bigger sizes were worth more and little sizes weren't. Uh, so our goal then was to make bigger sizes and in two years we had him with a really high percentage of bigger fruit and a larger crop. So, so it was just finding out timings of when to apply nutrients to maximize their inputs and, and their effect into the plant. That's very interesting uh, to hear about how important timing and what nutrients at what time can have such a drastic effect on the crop 
output and sizing of the crop themselves, uh, whether that's prunes or other assorted fruit. But I want to get more into, I guess, ag consulting is a very competitive industry in terms of acquiring people's trust. And so I wanted to ask you how you got over that hump of buying over, winning over people's trust that you know what you're talking about and that you are there to help them contrary to what they may believe. Yeah, well, it was uh, ab- you know, actually kind of odd is that there really wasn't any competition for what I was doing. Uh, the competition was most ag consultings. They did more of a, of a, a holistic, in other words, did everything. They, they went and they would, they would tell you what to put on fertility-wise. They would tell you what to put on. They would monitor your fields for pests. They'd work out the proper herbicides. They'd even help you. Some of them would even help you buy fertilizers and, and get things priced better for you. I mean, there's different, but it was more so all on these other points. I honed in on one aspect, and that's getting your crops or your soils in better shape to produce better crops. And uh, I had unique ideas that were different from a lot of the thought processes that have been in place before. So the way I had to go about it was and let me do some of your farm. And uh, normally, I learned later, the farms I usually got were the absolute worst because they were they were hopeless in the farmer's mind that he really couldn't do much with them. And uh, so we started on those. And when we did, uh, we got some, you know, what we thought were eh, maybe mediocre results. The farmer was ecstatic. He never got anything like that before. And the opportunity that he could... Uh, actually turn this farm around was pretty amazing so it took us a a kind of a struggle for the first couple years to get our name out there and me doing a lot of seminars you know day-long seminars about soil fertility and and water management and water quality and we we got just kept a little bit more broader and broader based program for them and we had enough business that we were working on that after those two years, it was somewhere around the middle of the third year, I had people come to me after we had been on, on their farm for a couple of years going, okay, what's it going to cost to do all the farms? And, and I was able to line up some very large clients in the thousands of acres, which just put us on the map. And after the, and most of that was started up. We had our biggest success starting up early on in the, in the Chico area or, or in and around the Chico area, quite a bit of that area. And, uh, and so that's where we started, mostly on tree crops. Uh, we did have some fruit crops. I did some kiwis, some peaches, some uh, prunes up there in that area. But uh, most of it was almonds and walnuts. And so, and then as we moved south, uh, then we started to branch out and go into, uh, you know, more table grapes, uh, a lot more almonds. We had several growers of thousands of acres plus down there. And then we got into the vegetables in the Central Coast, Salinas and Hollister areas, and and then the wine grapes up in the, the Napa Valley, Alexander Valley up in that area, wine grapes over on the Central Coast around the Monterey County area. So we just start increasing our diversity, along with some local things around my hometown here of Modesto, in and around you know 40 50 miles of here we all, we're also doing some but uh but that's how it just kind of expanded and once all of a sudden you start having success people want to know what what you're doing and how you got there and because of that we just kind of exploded yeah it sounds like the results kind of advertised for you in that regard in terms of getting more clients and winning over people's trust because i feel like that's the main part or like a huge part of consulting is essentially getting people to trust that what you're telling them to do or what you're advising them to do will yield them very good benefits uh, in whatever they're trying to accomplish, whether it's like you were saying, larger crops, more plentiful crops or whatever, just getting their crops more healthy. But yeah, winning over trust sounds to be the most important aspect of consulting. Yeah, I think it really in farming in general, you know, trust becomes in the farming community, trust is everything. And it takes a long time to build it and a couple incidents to destroy it. So you have to be very uh, prudent, very 
careful in how you approach things. I had a couple things working for me I didn't realize when I started. One of them was that I farmed myself. And I had my own results in my own home that I would take pictures of, of some almonds and walnuts that I was doing. And it was something that they wanted to have. So they said, okay, he's putting his money where his mouth is, so to speak. And that was a big, uh, a big thing. And the other thing is when I told them to do thing, do something in, on their field, it was always because that's what you need to do because there was no monetary gain for me for them buying any of the fertilizers or, or micronutrients or any of the things, I, soil amendments that I told them to buy. There was no monetary gain for me. That's just what you need to do. That's another interesting thought that I don't think a lot of people would really pick up on, but you made the point, and it's a very good one, that you don't gain anything from recommending someone put fertilizer down or like assorted nutrients into the ground because you're not working for any of the companies that are selling those nutrients or fertilizers or anything like that. So it's not like you're selling a product or like a physical product like that. You're selling your knowledge, essentially. Like you were saying, I, I feel like that contributes to a lot of the trust building uh, that you're not trying to sell them this new fertilizer, or this miracle nutrient or whatever. You're just saying, this is what you need to do. Either you're going to do it and be successful or you're not going to do it and you're just going to be stuck with what you have. So I feel like that's a good point to really establish is that you're not benefiting from recommending these different things unless the client actually adopts the mindset that you're trying to provide them. Yeah, it's funny you should say that. I always used to say that I would talk to clients, we would discuss what needs to be done, and I would come back, you know, in two weeks later. Usually that was my interval. I had another young man working for me and he would visit there one week and I would visit you know he would go north I would go south and we would switch around I would go north he would go south and I'd come back two weeks later and uh, they hadn't done anything that I'd asked him to do and and I had to say you know you really uh, just us talking about it doesn't make it better you literally have to go do what I told you so we had that discussion several times and uh, people uh, began to see uh, the results and it was it was a really interesting time because it was some of the things I were talking about were not uh, they just weren't considered the right way to do things. But in actuality, once I learned uh, the Neil Kinsey, William Albrecht, and uh, Bob Perry, those three people, somebody doing the proper soil uh, analysis at, at the Perry Lab. And Neil giving us the calculations and the directions of Dr. Albrecht and how to make soils perform well for you. Uh, and then uh, putting those to practice. And then with my own experience on in the field and in my own experience, I found out later with water quality and how I put together a whole water quality program for our uh, growers. That's how uh, we really we really just took off at that point. It wasn't hard to get business fact it was a it, we began to pick and choose if we liked doing the business or the job that was at hand it was uh we weren't able to cover as much as it was out there so that's kind of nice is you always have people waiting in the wings if someone decides they've had enough or they sell the property and go to somebody else that doesn't want our service then we always had people waiting for us yeah and it's like i said it's it's a cool concept that you're not I guess, working for one of these other larger companies that are like a fertilizer company or whatever, you're not trying to sell these farmers on a product necessarily as much as a mindset, like an application, um, your knowledge on what you see and what you've derived from taking soil samples, tissue samples, looking at their water, all this kind of stuff. You're advising these farmers to adopt your mindset towards farming and stuff like that um and timing and application of these different nutrients and all that which in a large part is probably what set you aside from like you were saying earlier about all these other consulting companies that are kind of all-encompassing uh since you specialized in soil fertility in particular rather than a little bit of everything it kind of makes you a unique valuable tool to a lot of smaller farmers to these multi-thousand acre farmers which is a good quality to have set aside from the rest of the herd it was a it was a unique time because that it was when you went out to talk to people it was like 
a whole different idea that they hadn't heard. They were waiting for, okay, we'll buy this and we'll sell you this and these are the things you need to put on. And uh, No, I've never had to look across the table and ever worried that I was selling something, not for the reason other than that's what you need and, and I'm not selling it to you. That I'm telling you that because I've tried it, I've used it, I've seen it used in other places. This is a proper application for it in this uh, circumstance. So that's kind of how I always felt really comfortable being able to recommend things. Uh, and one of the things is that, you know, I don't, I don't uh, diminish the fact that, that farming is economics. You know, I have a saying I like to use a lot. I said, you know, if you're not using economics in your rec recommendations, then you're gardening, you're not farming. And, and so we're not just doing it for fun, we're doing it for a profit. So I'm always very respectful for the person's budget. So we would go, I would go down and tell them all the other nutrients that they needed. Here's how you need, here's how it's gonna do. It's gonna take us this many years to get there. Now let's sit down and see what you can afford to do. What's your budget for this year? And I could find that out because I'm not selling you anything. I say, well, you don't really need that much or yeah, we, if that's how much we have, here's where we're going to maximize your production, knowing that you're gonna to have to do these other things down the road, but we'll put it into a program and stage a year by year that we'll get there and we're investing in the soil for the long term with all the different uh, you know whether it be the soil amending I always told them I wanted to spend your dollars I didn't want you to say well I got this many and I'll spend it on these items I can do a lot better job if you'll let me select the most important those that have the most uh, urgent priority to make sure we do them and uh, and so we uh, we came out of that uh, with a good relationship. They they came very. Uh, I got to very close with most all of my clients at one point. We it was a you know a partnership. Me supplying the information, them supplying the the farming techniques, and also following directions and uh, asking me questions, making me better. A lot of times they say, "What if I can I do it this way rather than the way you prescribed?" And I said, "Sure." And we, we would work together to come up with a solution that was better fit for his farming operation. So kind of to build on that point of going to these farmers who already have their pre-existing programs in place or whatever their fertilizer regimens are, have you run into a situation where you've wanted to apply what you know about soil fertility and the farmer that you're trying to consult for already has their own way of going about things and are kind of set in stone on a few aspects or whatever. So like what basically what I'm trying to ask is like, what are some of your strategies, I guess you could say, to try and win over that kind of more stuck in their ways farmer who may be doing something in a less optimal way than it should be done? And you have to basically convince them, like, eh, maybe we go about it a little bit different. What I would tell you is I, if they absolutely want to continue to do things the way they had done them in the past, I always like to say, you're successful the way you're doing it now. If you want to get better, we can do that. If you want to continue to be where you're at, then just continue to do it. It doesn't hurt my feelings. You're not bothering me that I'm not going to do the work. But it makes no sense to hire me on and pay me and you don't do a thing I do, you know, and you say, well, I don't see the guy doing anything good for me. Well, you're really not doing anything I told you, so, so it wasn't going to be good for me long term. But the way I would convince them, if they had really some interest, but they were reluctant to change, I said, here, let's take a field. And, and depending on what size it was, you take the north half and I'll take the south half, or I'll take the the north half you take the south half whichever side you want you can take the better half i don't know your farm well enough to do that but let me take my side and i'll do everything on that and it's it's a very very small investment to find out whether uh it's going to improve or not but you have to give me three years because that's how long it's going to take some of the soil amendments to do their full job it'll also take that long to build up some of the lower things but if you'll do that for three years I said, and at the end of that, if you're not seeing significant improvement, then then you should just say, I, I'm going to go back to everything I was doing before. And that I started with some clients that way. And it was a lot of times it was only after two years that we said, well, well let's do the rest of that field. And uh, we pretty soon we were doing most, if not all the ranch. 
interesting like a little trial experiment basically a prove what you're worth type of deal with farmers where it's like proof is in the pudding kind of building off of that i would say i I feel like a lot of people would be interested in like what gratification you receive from your career and consulting like what's the most gratifying part about what you do yeah really the the most gratifying part was, was when i went into it was to show ways that a lot of growers hadn't had any experience or any introduction to a way of growing that's different and be able to take them to some some yields that they hadn't really seen and see some quality levels that they hadn't seen before that was one and then really one of the, the things that probably most gratifying was is that <clears throat> as I got you know better at my craft and got more well known you know just a little a young farmer at that time I was getting older but but you know just a kid from uh, Modesto series area and all of a sudden I found myself you know flying to Philippines and Thailand and Vietnam and uh, Singapore Malaysia Australia New Zealand you know even into Japan South Africa and some days I just pinched myself and said you know how did you get here but farmers all speak the same language. They may have different, a little bit different techniques in some of these areas, but I was able to go to all these different places, and, and, and even now into Europe. I'm still working on some, some properties in Portugal currently, and uh, I was in Germany. Anyway, the, just the list goes on and on, as well as across the U.S. in several states, uh, because the information is universal. You know, soil reacts to soil, and the water and the soil react together, and it doesn't make any difference in where in the world if you get the basic information. And that, that's why it was such a revelation when I heard Neil Kinsey talk for the first time. No matter where you're at, no matter how anything's done, we can fix it given the proper tools and the proper nutrients to apply in the proper amounts, at, at, and a lot of them at the proper time, to really maximize production all over the world. Sounds like a very fulfilling um, experience to be able to go into some of these farms who, from an outside perspective, might look like, oh, yeah, it's just that's just a orchard of trees. That's no big deal about that. But from someone who has a little bit more insight on it, such as yourself, to be able to go into an orchard or a row of vegetables or you name it and be able to diagnose what could be better and then applying what you think is better and then seeing the results a couple years a few years down the line and then from there being able to on top of all that grow your own clientele and go from there as a bonus uh to your services which i find that to be quite interesting quite quite cool and i'm sure a lot of other people will as well yeah it's it's been very rewarding uh i when I st- <laughs> there was no uh, uh, plan on how this business was going to be. There, there really wasn't any design that anybody had laid out ahead of me that had ever done this before. So it was kind of make it up as you go, and that worked really well. Uh, but the soils were the soil. The information of what to do and how to do it and when to do it were all there. I never changed that. It was just how you introduced yourself to, you know, clients what you could see out in the field, what you could then help them with, how their soils reacted to what we're doing, checking into their water uh, to see what quality it was and what it was doing to hold us back from reaching our fertility goals. Uh, Those kind of things were, like I say, were super rewarding that, uh, you know, uh, I always tell people when I got started, once I had been here and seen how everything had worked, I knew that it worked. And so if it didn't, if I went somewhere and things didn't work as expected, I didn't give up and say, well, it doesn't work here. What I said was, there's a reason that's different here. I must find the reason because I will see that problem again at some other place. And with that kind of mindset, uh, that's what led me to a lot of what I found on water and water quality was it was not being accounted for by the, the system, the Albrecht and Kinsey model. So I needed to model my own system for that to be able to put that together so that people could could then put water and and adjust for that in their 
fertilization so that they could get maximum results. But if you just give up quickly, you don't ever get to the, the real rewards, which are you, you get to the point where you can fix most anything. Yeah, and it sounds like an ever-evolving, I guess, career. Like, it's never the same thing twice, which um, I'm sure is quite appealing to a lot of people who are potentially potentially in the same situation that you were in uh, back in your farm supply days who are like, they take an interest in soil fertility or in just how crops are grown and how to maximize each crop individually. And so which leads me to my next question of like, what advice would you give to someone who is trying to break into the industry of crop consulting and or soil fertility consulting? If you had to do it all over again yourself, uh, what would you say? Start here, do this. The first thing that I would tell them people, if you're going to start in, in soil fertility is read a book called, you know, hands on agronomy by Neil Kinsey. It's a very, very good read. It tells you a lot of the basics. And then it can lead you to, to really more technical side and, and uh, some really interesting reading from Dr. William Albrecht. And, and then that'll lead, lead you to other books. And then I really recommend uh, you, uh, you attend a, a Neil Kinsey seminar or somebody that that's, can give you that uh, type of seminar and uh, and be able to put it together and then you have a contact people that you can now talk to i always say i'm not ever i've never quit learning I, I still have so much to learn but uh i have learned so much over the years that it, it's it gets me better than you'd get if if i wasn't there but i can still get better i never looked at it as i know everything and and because you just can't get there so we just continue to learn but that's where you can start and, and then get a good basis of science in your, uh, if you're going to school education, if you're in college, make sure, if you've had it, then that's great. That's, that's what I had at my uh, education was at UC Davis. My college education was there and uh, graduated in seven, 1973 with a, a Bachelor of Science degree. And it was heavy in chemistry and biochemistry and, and all kinds of things that weren't really related to ag, but when you get to soil fertility, those things really are important so that you not only just are recommending things, you're understanding how they work. When they hit soils, when they hit acid conditions, when they hit basic conditions, all of the different things you're going to encounter out on that soil. But, but it starts a lot with education. And uh, one of the things that I intend uh, these podcasts to do, and, and I am still doing them now in addition to this, is, is, that, is educate. You know, I'm at, at my age, I don't do near the acreage we used to do. Uh, we've cut it way back, enough to keep it interesting and fun, and enough to keep people that I really appreciate that helped me get along the way, helped me a lot along the way that, that continue to do their work. But, but I'm just uh, worried, focus more as I get a little bit older here on, on being able to pass the knowledge on to the next group. Uh, so that they can take it and make it even better than, than Neil Kinsey and Dr. Albrecht and myself have, have been able to do is just make it something because we need the food and we need the quality of food. And, uh, and we all should participate here because we all eat. And uh, the better the food, the better and the healthier we'll all be. They all are in a, a continuous a cycle. Um, and, and as being a consultant, and, and we'll talk maybe about one of these podcasts about what all the different aspects and why you have to be multitasking on, on not just agronomy or not just soil science. You, you have to be a very uh, knowledgeable in, in probably a dozen different areas to be really good at consulting. And I learned that from a, a friend of mine that, that was a soil... A, uh, doctor of soil science over at uh, Cal Poly and he said you know one of our problems is we tend to isolate or put our knowledge into silos and we need to expand them out so that we put them all together to make a, uh, a well-rounded idea how soils work. So looking back at your journey so to speak on in consulting and so on and so forth uh, is there anything that you would have done differently or like any advice that you would give to yourself as cliche as that sounds? Yeah, you know, 
when you've done something that and that's why even at, at my age now I still enjoy doing what I do and, and so that it becomes you know not work anymore you know I, I just enjoy it so much I don't even really look at it as much in the way of work you know and the first thing that most people would say would be well I would have started a lot earlier and I would have had a a lot more years of doing this but the time was right when the time was right and uh, I was able to uh, have a great career of you know 20 years of outside consulting and I'm continued to do it so who knows how long that will go but it would have been nice maybe to get a few other classes when I was in college it would have been convenient to take them and looking back and what I could have done with them I was focused kind of on a different direction but it would have been nice to have got a little bit more specific. And because he's such a close personal friend of mine, it would have been really great if I'd have met Neil Kinsey at a younger age. But life has a way of, of showing up when it shows up. And, and the time was the time. And I, I don't look back with any regret. I, I just look back in wonderment of how much in this period of time I've been able to do and, uh, and where I've went. And, and this doggone old soil, that's all that it's, it's done is take me to all, a lot of corners of the world I never even expected to ever do and, and meet people I never expected to meet with companies and, and, uh, and be able to talk to them and, and help them out. And, and so I don't know that I'd change much, uh, but I would probably uh, wish I had a little bit better knowledge in some areas. And, uh, and I continue to try to fill those gaps as I get older. Well, it sounds like you've had quite the fulfilling and, I guess, surprising to yourself career in consulting. And all of it comes from, like you kind of said, life serving you up right place, right time with the right people. And then you taking an interest to, at the time and in a lot of ways right now, still kind of a niche career in consulting soil fertility water quality and so on it sounds like you're quite happy with how everything's turned out no it's it's turned out far beyond anything i expected and it's just been a wonderful wonderful life and in the future you know as we move forward with our podcast i want to start to really go into depth on individual things we'll, uh, starting with some of the things on soil uh, we'll probably start there with just the beginning basics and just go podcast by podcast through a lot of information. And uh, along the way, we may stop for a little bit of fun to talk about some of my experiences along the way and, and in and around the world. Once people get to know uh, a little bit more about the educational part of this, uh, the soil. And we'll, we'll do a, probably several podcasts just on soil, soils. And, uh, and once we get done with them, we'll move on to water and and as long as there's content in my mind, I'll keep putting them out as long as people are interested in listening. For sure. And we'll definitely address more specific topics, like you said, about soil and your views on fertility, soil fertility and all that kind of interesting stuff, as well as we'll address water and we'll address different crops. And like you said, we'll address some of your times in other countries outside of the United States and your trips abroad and how that came to be and what you did overseas and so on and so forth. So that is all to come in future episodes for sure. I would also like to say a big thank you to our listeners of today's episode be sure to tune in for more in a nutshell where we look to dive deeper into the individual parts of consulting later on in future episodes don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment if you're listening on youtube this has been dylan brush and bill brush on in a nutshell and until next time stay curious